welcome back to this last episode in our discussion with the naval architect Antoine Richer about different aspects of Catarin design. Now today we are going to discuss lamination, we're going to discuss resins, fiberglass, we're going to discuss filling materials, we're going to discuss lots of different sandwich materials. It's a little bit dry but if you are considering buying a new or a used Catarin it is pretty important that you understand the properties of the materials that are used to build your boat. So welcome back Antoine again. Pretty interesting discussion. I want to talk to you first about your understanding of fiberglass. Now fiberglass it's it's an eponymous term there is fiber and there is glass. Now to us the fiber is fiber it's it, it's glass in it can also be Kevlar or carbon and then there's the resin. So can you just explain that a brief overview of things um, like that for us. So the fiberglass for us. You have different type of, of fiber we can use on a, on a boat. Uh, fiberglass, carbon, Kevlar and um, the um, they all have different property um, and uh, we also use different type of resin but the resin the resin is only here to connect the fiber between each other because the fiber has the strength and the resin is only here to uh, for the for the for the compression uh, loads and the fiber has the has the tensile strength so the actual glass mat or the fiberglass mat or the the, uh, the the Kevlar or the carbon mat that that gives you that has tensile strength, um, but doesn't have any compressive strength, and um, you have to add the the actual the resin to add the compressive strength. That's correct. That's, that's yeah. as I understand it. Fantastic. Now I, there is something. I mean, what was it? I mean, we did this in physics, at, you know, at school and then at university. So the, the Young's modulus of elasticity, where you take a piece of wire and stretch it, and it's what it force over area over extension over length. And so, yeah, this this rings rings a, ding, a dim and distant bell. So, when you're designing a boat, let's talk about the fiber first. You have fiberglass, carbon, and Kevlar. Why, and what are the what are the benefits of those materials individually? Um. Fiberglass it's, um, has good properties and it's uh, relatively cheap. Um, then you have the, the, the carbon, good in compression, good in traction, um, but also more expensive. And then you have the, the Kevlar, which is, has very good property in traction, but not in compression. Um, you will never see a, a Kevlar uh, uh, central post behind the mast, for example. Um, but you can see Kevlar on the on the kill line because the kill line has the traction uh, works in traction, and so you can use Kevlar. And it's also good if you want to beach your cat uh, because, as you know, Kevlar is used for the uh, it's a, it's a bulletproof for the um, uh, for the vest. Yeah, yeah. But it's actually it's uh, it's quite rare. Huh? Yeah. So basically, when you're looking at the material science, you know, you're looking at, you know, the, the, the how different um, fibers respond to different areas. So if you need high abrasion resistance, you will use a Kevlar. If you need uh, higher strength, you will use carbon and then fiberglass in, in, in most common areas. Yes. Yeah, most of the time you will use, uh, if, uh, you will use fiberglass and for the uh, loaded area, you, you can use carbon. So my understanding is that there are three different types of resin we're looking at here. We're looking at uh, vinyl ester, polyester, and epoxy. So can you tell us a little bit about those three resin types? Yeah. So um, from the cheapest to the uh, to the more costly, you have the so the polyester is the cheapest, and then you have the vinyl ester, and then the epoxy. Uh, the epo epoxy has the better property. The polyester has the worst property, and the vinyl ester is uh, is in the, in the middle. Um, the vinyl ester is um, much more resistant to the water, you know, water penet penetration, the hydrolysis, uh, which can cause the osmotic uh, blistering. Um, also, the vinyl ester uh, shrinks less uh, on curing, which is um, um, which is good. Um, 
and um, vinyl ester are more tolerant of uh, stretching than polyester. This makes them more uh, able to absorb impact without damage. And um, they are also less likely to show stress, uh, stress uh, cracking. Okay. So the three of them. So really, in in order of increasing, um, you know, benefits. At the the bottom is polyester. That's the that's the least. That's that's the cheapest material, but also it has the, the worst properties. Then middle ground is vinyl ester, and finally epoxy. And then for fibers, we've talked about uh, fiberglass, carbon, and Kevlar. And then there's the sandwich materials, which we've seen anything from, you can get like solid solid fiberglass, you can get balsa cord, or you can get like sandwich materials, which is again, um, there are different brands, different types of sandwich material. So just to kind of finish this first, um, you know, almost a, a discussion about, you know, just the basic overview of materials. Talk to me about the sandwich materials. Yes. Yeah, so the, um, for your, for example, for your for your hull, for your structure, or for your bulkhead, what you what you want is to have inertia, to have thickness. And um, the issue with the monolithic is, if you need, let's say, 20 millimeter of thickness, if if it's monolithic, uh, you will end up having an extremely okay. heavy uh, bulkhead or hull. So what we do is we have foam in between the layer. And the foam allows you to increase the thickness without adding uh, weight or a little bit, depend of the density of your foam. Um, so I mean, this I mean this when you say it like that, it actually makes it pretty obvious. But you know, it's something I'd never actually put two and two together. So the strength of the hull is to do with the actual thickness of the hull, um, the actual physical thickness of, of that. And using solid fiberglass isn't really appropriate because of the amount of weight you will need. Um, so you have to have some sort of sandwich material. And so there's a discussion then about sandwich materials. So again, we've seen balsa below the waterline and I've always got this thing in my head that why would you put balsa wood below the waterline? Uh, but you use um, foam core. Now, talk to me a little bit about balsa, why people would use balsa below the waterline in a, in a catamaran. Hmm. What are the advantages? Are there any advantages of it just to save money? Just it's money, just to save money. It's a money thing. So basically, so again, we're looking at, I mean, I'm gonna put this as an analogy of making a cake. You can buy different ingredients and they're different quality ingredients. And the way that you combine these ingredients gives you the quality of the final product. So we've talked about resins. At the lower end of the quality scale, you've got polyester. At the middle end, you've got vinyl ester, and then the kind of like the gold standard is epoxy. And we've discussed all the reasons for that. Then when you're talking about fibers, you've got fiberglass at the lower end, but then carbon and Kevlar are superior, but both have different properties. And then the final cake ingredient, let's call it the eggs, are the sandwich material. Do you use balsa wood or do you use um, like a, a foam core? And that, but the way that you put all those together, all those ingredients together in the mixing bowl shows you the quality of the, of the, of the final result before you actually go to baking the cake or constructing the boat, depending on which analogy you want to use. Okay, so sandwich cores. Now there are different types of sandwich cores as well. So again, when we're talking about foam core, again, I've read somewhere that it's all to do with the density of foam core that you're using. So can you just, is that correct? Yes, the density of, uh, so we have diff different density of foam um, for different area. An area where you have a lot of uh, uh, load, a lot of shear, uh, you will use a um, higher density foam, or if you want to, to bolt through uh, fittings, you can use higher density foam um, because they are better uh, on the shear, tr shear strengths. Okay, so basically, so the, the properties of the of the actual the actual properties of the foam are also pretty important in distributing loads in certain areas. So you choose different foams for different areas on a boat. Correct. Yeah. Okay, so I mean, you know, I, I'm probably going to hark back on this cake, you know, analogy a little bit more, seeing as it's almost you know mid morning tea time. Uh, so you've now got all these ingredients but you need to turn them into a boat. Now there is different ways 
of, of, the, of processes of, of making, turning these ingredients into, into fiberglass. So can you run through the, the methods, the different, the, 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 the main methods for, for, for actually making fiberglass? The, um, yeah, the, pro the process, you mean? The process of... Um, yes, the processes, yeah. yes, yeah. Um, so the less expensive, the less... Uh, uh, the, the less... Um, uh, the worst mechanical properties is the hand lamination. Um, right. And then above that you have the vacuum, wet layer vacuum. Yep. And then above you have the infusion. Infusion process. Yep. And then you have the pre prey, uh, which is um, which is fiber already uh, um, impregnated with resin. You store it on the freezer, and then. Okay, so so basically, so in 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 order of kind of like increasing quality, hand lamination, I understand because I think a lot of monoholes are built like that, where they actually, you know, they, they you literally you see people, you know, sheets of. Um, you know, fiberglass, and they're rolling epoxy or, or vinyl. You know, onto onto that. So the next step, the next you said was was it vacuum infusion or what was that? What is the next the next level of quality? Yeah, hand lamination, uh, wet vacuum layup, vacuum infusion, and then uh, pre prey. Okay, so wet vacuum, wet vacuum lamination. What is that? So, what you do is uh, you you put your fiber, um, you um, put the resin, and then you put your bag and you do the void. Whereas on the infusion is you put all your all your fiber, the bag, and then you get the vacuum and the resin is sucked in the uh, thanks to the thanks to the void. So, hand lamination, men with rollers. The next process is um, you put the you put the resin onto the fiberglass, then put the bag, and then suck the voids out. Yeah. The third process, which is better, is you put the fiberglass down, and then you put the bag in, and then you suck the resin through. Yes. And then finally, you do something mad. Um, the final stage is pre-impregnated fiberglass. That sounds ridiculously expensive, and I'm t I'm probably you're going to tell me that this happens with super yachts and racing yachts only. Yeah, and mast and masts. Yeah, mast. Okay. Yeah, mast. Uh, because that's um, that's a part really you need uh, to save the weight and you uh, you need strength. Uh, one of the most important part, critical part, is the is the mast. So for the mast, yes, you can use a pre preg. Yeah. <clears throat> for the pre preg, what you need is to store your fiber on a on a freezer. Uh, because uh, on the freezer, the the the, the, the resin do not um, um, catalyze. So basically, what you're saying is that if you are looking to buy a boat, and if you're looking to buy a boat which is either pre-owned or new, if you are talking to the dealer or the manufacturer about hull materials, you need to understand what resin is used what fibers used and then what sandwich materials used and once you've got that picture you need to then once you've got all the ingredients understand how the ingredients are cooked you know i'm going back to that cake analogy but so basically either pre-pregged infusion vacuum or hand lamination and so really on the whole scale of say naught to a hundred where naught is the worst process and a hundred is the best there's probably if you've got three different epoxies, three different fibers, and probably three or four different fiber materials, and then four different processes, there's a huge variance in strength and quality of whole material. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yes, that's a lot of parameter. Yeah, so, okay, so just, I, I'm gonna ask you, because actually we don't know this yet, um, <laughs> and I, you know, I kind of almost set you up for a trap here. Are the 1370, um, what are you building it out of? You know, I kind of like, so let's go through fiber. So I know that you're using different fibers for that. So I, that one we already know. So fiber for the 1370? 
Yeah, fiber, fiberglass and carbon for, uh, for specific area. Fine, good. Resin for the 1370? Polyester, vinyl ester, or epoxy? So, so for the 1370, it's um, vinyl ester and uh, fiberglass and carbon for the, uh, speci some specific area. Okay, um, sandwich. So I'm, I'm assuming that the 1370 is, it, you're not using balsa, you're using a, a, a high grade sandwich uh, foam core. Yes, full foam core, different density um, throughout the, the boat. And the processes you're using for this? And uh, process uh, infusion. Vacuum infusion? Yes, vacuum okay. infusion. So where you suck the vacuum? Some parts are um, vacuum, yeah. Some parts, some small parts, it's vacuum, wet vacuum, but uh, the, the deck and the hull, it's... Um, it's uh, infusion, yeah. Pretty, that's, pretty, that's pretty impressive. I mean, I, as I said, I've obviously been to the factory and seen the, you know, the quality of workmanship. But that's, it's pretty impressive, and you know, thank you for telling us that. So if you're looking to buy any boat, you do need to have these questions answered. And I, I do think that you know, we're going to have all sorts of miniature Nick Voodoo dolls made by dealers around the world when they've got customers saying, well, we want to know whether it's polyester or vinyl ester. We want to know whether there's fiberglass or Kevlar. We want to know the sandwich material, and we want to know the you know are you doing vacuum infusion or hand lamination and to tell you the truth you know put it this way if you buy a cake you look at the ingredients you know a cake will cost you ten dollars and a catamaran costs you a million dollars why do you not why would you not want to know the ingredients that go into what, something which costs so much money so that's that's really very very uh really pretty impressive stuff so thank you for that antoine i think that's been a pretty long discussion about the material science behind the ingredients that go into your boat. So thank you so much for that. Is there anything you want to add to that discussion? Um, you know, now that we're sort of drawing us to an end. Yeah, I would add that. Um, um, okay, you have the you have the fiber, you have the resin, you have the process, but also a very important point is the method of construction. Is the is the hull deck is bonded? Is it taped? Or the is the furniture or the structure, the bulkhead, um, are they glued, so bonded or taped? Uh, this will make um, a huge difference in the weight and the strength. Um, glue is um, is the easy way, yeah, but it's. Uh, so basically when, I mean, again, this is a bit like, um, once again, a cake pops into mind. So you've got the cake, you've got the cake, but you want to put the icing on it. So basically you're talking about how you bond the hull to the deck, how you connect the two, and there's different ways of doing that. Okay, so you've got, um, you can bond to the deck, or you can glue, or you can, did you say tape? That's the third one. Yeah, it's simple. You use a um, vinyl ester glue or polyester glue or epoxy glue. So glue is the cheapest, and then obviously bonding. Bonding, how do you bond it to the boat then? How do you bond the two together? Is it a chemical process? Yes. Okay. So there, so there are all types of glue then, what, you know, whether you're bonding it or gluing it, there's a different, it's just, it's just the material that you use to connect the two to provide chem, mechanical and chemical adhesion. You also have the, um, the, the, so the method of construction how the furniture is uh, is um, is built into the boat. On the mass-produced boat, all the furniture, all the blocks are made outside, and they are strong. And at the assembly stage, you put all the blocks inside the boat. But the issue with that is the um, for the for example the galley or the head or extra. They are they they are uh, strong as a block and. If you put two blocks to uh, um, each, um, I can I can say, you end up having two bulkheads. No, no, I, I get what you mean. So basically, if you're if you're constructing something that has to have four sides to it, and you're putting it against a bulkhead, you're getting twice as much material where it's not necessary. Whereas if you construct everything and you've got furniture which is integrated into the molds, you don't have a double thickness of material where you don't need it. Yes. So you're saving weight but increasing strength. Because yeah. from what I can gather, it's a bit like a doll's house. You know, if you're taking a, ha a doll's house and putting all the furniture into that house, there's no structural uh, increase in structure and integrity for modular furniture going in. Yeah. And the other thing is, you know, and we've heard this from so 
so many people that you get you then end up inducing lots of noise and squeaks and noises from the you know uh, it, you know in in a boat so yeah we've heard that and we've heard so many catarant owners that are like the boat makes so much noise on passage because the modular furniture is moving around so again these are all things that people don't consider so just to run through this when you are considering buying a catarant or even you know or new or used look to this as well so not just the ingredients that go into the construction of the hull but also all the moving parts that go into the boat and is that going to contribute to structure to increase strength is it going to decrease the strength is it going to increase noise through squeaking and overall what is the quality of the product that you are buying on a molecular level i mean it, something that no one considers and i think that's absolutely fantastic so antoine i think that is a really really useful and insightful kind of like look at cataran design at a level that i've I've always wanted to know. So thank you so much for your time over this series. That's been pretty useful to us. Again, to all of you that have watched this series, I hope you enjoyed that pretty technical look at modern Cataran design techniques from the drawing board through the material science to the final product. And I hope you can see now that there is a huge variance between different methodologies, different materials, and different approaches to design, uh, and that how that influences what you are sailing and how safe, comfortable, and happy you're gonna be on the water. So thank you so much for watching this episode. This concludes our discussion with Antoine and the team over at Seawind. I hope you find that really useful. Leave us questions down below. And if you haven't already done so, subscribe to the channel because there's gonna be a lot more technical stuff coming over the months. So thank you for watching this one. We'll see you again soon, goodbye. And for those of you looking to buy a boat, whether it's new or used, a catamaran or a monohull, we have a free download for you this week. It is a boat buyer's question checklist for all the models you are considering. See the link in the description.